How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Chainsaw Man Season 1 of the anime. This is from 2022. I, at the time of recording, was able to find it on Hulu, but obviously location and time streaming is always subject to change, but I'm glad I was able to find it there. Uh, this is directed by Ryu Nakayama and stars uh, Kikunosuke Toya, Tomori Konsunoki, and Shoho Sakura. Sorry if I mispronounced any of those names. Uh, but Chainsaw Man is obviously based on the manga of the same name by Tatsuki Fujimoto. And this first season will adapt roughly the first 38 chapters. And um, that will be about the midpoint of Volume 5. And I have to say, a pretty faithful adaptation. If anything, they gave the scenes more time to breathe and really just let the story sink in. I recently watched those Junji Ito animes, and um, let me say, condensing a whole story into like half a time block? Not great. Giving things time to breathe like Chainsaw Man? That works. Give the story what it needs. Uh, but anyway, I'm not the most in tune with all the new anime. I know some people really do have their finger on the pulse and know every new series that's coming out and will even watch them before the dubs get here. Um, I don't know all of them, but I did hear about this one, and when I heard about it, I knew I had to check it out really quick. I mean, it's called Chainsaw Man. <laughs> that's great. But then you see the main character, and he has a chainsaw for a head and two chainsaws like Wolverine claws coming out of his arms? That's pretty cool. And I will say that this does a whole lot of stuff right. If you're looking for Chainsaw Man, you want cool, crazy action sequences, and you get those here. Plus, the animation is top-notch, really, really cool, really cinematic but also they constantly try to pull off really hard and impressive shots. They use some computer stuff, which you kind of have to, but they use it in a good way. It, it really, it doesn't look bad at all, and they are able to accomplish these really impressive shots, and the whole show just looks good. But in addition to the cool action animated sequences, it does have a surprising amount of depth for its characters. Chainsaw Man is kind of similar to Starship Troopers, as in it's a group of desperate people sent out on really tough missions, and you have to analyze and wonder why the characters would go for this type of life. And it's crazy, it's creative, and it's at times really brutal. But a very interesting, interesting, cool, cool show, and I definitely can't recommend it enough. Uh, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about the plot. I'm not going to do any major spoilers, but I do want to take a moment to uh, kind of talk about the setup, talk about some of the main characters, and analyze a few plot points. Uh, but basically, in the world of Chainsaw Man, uh, there are devils all around the world. And these devils inhabit concepts. And the more humanity is terrified of a concept, the stronger and scarier the devil will be. So something like the tomato devil, it's still a monster, but no one's really scared of that. But then you get something bigger, like a spider, or a ghost, or a bat. Yeah, those will be some tougher and harder to beat devils. And then you get our main character, Dingy. Dingy is a really down-on-his-luck kid. He inherited debt from his parents, and a mobster says, basically, you owe me any money you can get, and you're going to be under my thumb your whole life. Well, Dingy will meet an injured devil, the Chainsaw Devil, and he decides to get it back to health in exchange for them teaming up to fight other devils. So he goes out and is a devil hunter and is making a okay living, when the gangsters decide to betray and kill him. 
However, uh, Puchita, the little chainsaw devil, decides to give Denji his heart to bring him back to life, and this will give him the ability to transform into a half-human, half-chainsaw devil creature known as Chainsaw Man. Well, something that big and crazy isn't going to go unnoticed by the government, Dingy's quickly picked up by the public safety devil hunters and said, hey, look, you're kind of a devil. We could kill you or you could work for us. And even though he's going from forced labor to forced labor in this new life, he's getting a, a soft bed. He's getting food to eat. He's getting baths and shelter. It's really the bare minimal, but Denji's never had this before, and to him, life is great. And the story really does focus and talk about once, both from Denji, but also the other characters. Denji realizes now that he could have a life where maybe he could build something up, maybe he could get things, maybe he could have more and more freedom. Also, maybe he could finally get a girl. He's never had one before, and he is kind of young, so it is a lot about his experiences and not knowing what he's doing, and also a bit about manipulation, because, yeah, there will definitely be a few girls in this series that will be trying to use this against him and get them to do things for him, and since we're hunting devils, that's progressively more and more dangerous stuff. But also we get this sort of ethics behind the character where other people will say, you're just selfish, you're just doing all this for yourself. And he goes, that's easy for you to say, you've had a life before, I'm fighting to get the bare minimal to survive, can you really call me selfish? And yeah, Denji is kind of the hero for millennials in that way, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, we get what Denji wants and even at times him going, ha have I become heartless? Someone he knows will die and he won't cry and he goes, what's, what's wrong with me? So I really do like, you know, he is a flawed character, but a character that's analyzed from multiple angles. And you get other characters as well. The head of public safety is this woman named Makama, and Dingy loves her because she's the first one to treat him like a human. But you know how I said people will manipulate him? Makama is the head of public safety. She wants to defeat all the devils, but you know that she is definitely willing to cross lines she shouldn't to do that. And her goals and her powers and and all this stuff about her is really kept super mysterious, and you never really know if you can trust her. You get his direct supervisor, Aki, and he's the, the stoic and serious type, and in a lot of other animes, that would pretty much be it. But not Chainsaw Man. They give him a surprising amount of depth, and you really see that he is willing to burn and sacrifice anything he needs to, literally wearing himself away, in order to achieve his goals and I like the amount of character development for Aki really is a surprising part of the series but of course devils are not homogenous they're not all on one side and some devils are more or less hostile to humans and some will actually make contracts with humans where the humans give them something, and in turn, they can borrow the devil's powers. So that's an interesting sort of superhero element there. But also, some devils kind of work with the humans. There's the blood devil, uh, who goes by power, and she is what's known as a fiend, a devil possessing a human corpse that allows her to live more of a normal life, and she gets captured by public safety and has to work with Dingy. There's a, a buddy system, so these two are paired together. And Dingy and Power are in a bit of a similar place where, you know, they're both just fighting to stay alive and they both just want to be happy. And Power especially, very self-centered, but also over the top. And she'll be like, foolish humans, yield to Power. And 
she's a, a fun, crazy character as well. Um, so yeah, we do get a lot from the human angle, but I also like how this balances action. Because in anime, you, you know, you have the trope of a really strong villain, you beat him, you do a bunch of training to beat the next strong villain that makes the old one look super easy. And you do get a bit of battle grinding in anime. And I do like that they resist going too far down this path. I mean, Denji is going to get more and more stronger villains, but we do have, again, those slow moments and the character work, but we also get different and interesting adventures. Going off to save Power's cat, or going into a hotel that turns out to be a horrible trap. I do like the varieties and missions, and how you, you don't really know what they're going to do. And of course, there is a good bit of humor in here as well. Power will get some good jokes, but also when we meet the the big bad for the season, at the end of that huge battle, it does end on this crude but somehow heartwarming joke that I think really represents what the series does pretty well. And I, I do think that's really interesting. I talked about the animation a little bit earlier, but again, I do want to stress, this does have really great animation. Um, the color palette looks very cinematic, almost like an oil painting, and I can really appreciate it. Again, I know that some people wanted more pop, crazy colors, but I think the cinematic stuff just really, really looks nice, and just Chainsaw Man's beautiful to look at. But in regards to the animation, you get things like perspective for a chainsaw blade and then having to make the little teeth of the chainsaw spin motion and in perspective. They did have to use computers for this, but the computer uh, stuff, it doesn't look bad. And that's the thing, is they use it to pull off these crazy complex shots and it looks really good. It looks really fluid. It really adds a ton to the battles as they were depicted in the manga. And also, even just little things. They'll constantly be thinking about these cool shots and how the camera can move. And, like, there's one scene where they're in the hospital and there's an apple with just a little netting around the bottom as a decoration and they take the apple out of the net and you can see the way it moves and it's this shot that's more complex than it needed to be but they wanted to do that because they knew it would look cool and yeah overall I can't recommend Chainsaw Man enough it's really good go check it out good character work crazy action beautiful animation I mean, like, the the endings, the, the end theme songs, it's new animation for every ending theme song, and they're all super impressive. That's great. Oh, and uh, the opening theme song is not only cool, but we also get references to Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and Big Lebowski in here. It's some cool stuff. Go check it out. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. If you guys want to see more, you can click right here and see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Playlist here. Have a good day now.